Okay, so let's talk about PPE, um, masks. Can you give us an update on um, the hospital supply of PPE? Um, a Facebook post indicated that we have a severe shortage of face masks for our staff. So if you could go over that, that would be great. Right, yeah, the, the topic of the day, and actually it's been the topic of the day all the way back to the beginning of March. Mm -hmm. Um, because as everybody knows across the country, um, initially during the outbreak of the pandemic, there was um, widespread scarcity of these kind of masks, um, this kind of PPE. I was talking to um, one of our nurse uh, leaders the other day, and under normal conditions, non-COVID conditions, our staff never wore N95 masks. They, you know, if they're taking care of a patient that has tuberculosis or active measles, then they would wear an N95 mask. But other than that, even during the height of the flu season, they don't wear them. So hospitals don't keep an enormous stock of them. Um, surgical masks are definitely, you know, worn much more commonly. But every hospital, you know, was really uh, under undersupplied uh, for this, you know, level of an outbreak. And um, early on, we had no idea, you know, when a surge might hit, how intense it would be, and what PPE would be available. Because um, our supplies were relatively low. And so out of the gate, we had to immediately adopt a, a, a protocol that called for conservation. So reuse of masks, which can be done safely if done properly. Mm -hmm. If you handle the mask appropriately, you store it appropriately, you, you know, what patients am I going to wear it? We used to keep, you know, the same PPE in the same room so that every time you went to take care of that same patient, you would put that PP back on. And so that, that conservation effort, um, which wasn't ideal by any means, because that's not normal for us. Generally speaking, in a non-COVID situation, you know, you put a surgical mask on if you're going into a room or, uh, and you throw it away when you're done. Mm -hmm. And no problem, they cost 50 cents each. Mm -hmm. But now they became like gold. And uh, again, not knowing when they were going to come again. So things have changed dramatically. Um, everything's kind of calmed down. Supply channels have stabilized. We now are routinely getting shipments of all kinds of of PPE. Um, as of yesterday, we had 75,099 N95 masks. So 75,100 N95 masks. We had more than 125,000 surgical masks, 65,000 pairs of gloves, uh, almost 11,000 isolation gowns, 3,600 face shields and 444 goggles and safety glasses. Um, so for us, that's been kind of a game changer. And this really all occurred last week. I mean, it was that recent. All of a sudden, you know, we get a 50,000 quantity shipment that comes in. Other suppliers start delivering them. What, what's been interesting is we're getting all makes and models of N95 masks. Usually we just get the 3M mask. Everybody knows how to wear it and everything. Um, but we're not being picky. You know, we're taking all N95 masks we can get. So a few weeks ago, with masks more plentiful, we now require every single employee in the organization to wear a mask. So, Deb, you and I wear mm -hmm. surgical masks mm -hmm. when we're not recording here. Um, and we'll put them back on, and, and, uh, and we were being asked to wear them two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's important to understand, throughout this entire thing, whenever somebody had a soiled mask, it got wet, it got damaged, it broke, we immediately replaced that. Mm -hmm. No questions asked, no hesitation. And so that's been in place all the way back to the beginning of, of March. Right. Um, but last week, with masks more plentiful, we now um, uh, implemented, I think it was maybe last Thursday or Friday, where we are giving uh, over 2,000 employees, those that work in the higher risk areas, so those that work on 2 South or 3 West or in the ICU or now the Broderick Pavilion or the emergency department, we now give them three N95 masks so that they can wear a, a new one 
<coughs> each day. Mm -hmm. And so they don't have to reuse it over and over again. Now, what we do ask them to do is at the end of that day one shift, you put it in a brown paper bag that mm -hmm. we furnished you, and then the next day when you start your shift, you put on mask number two. Mm -hmm. Wear it to the end of your shift, put it in brown paper bag number two. And then the same thing with the third one. On your fourth shift, you reach back into bag number one. And that, that mass has been sitting there for more than three days. Mm -hmm. And if it had any virus on it, it would be dead mm -hmm. at that point in time. So you essentially are putting out on a fresh mask again. We were going to ask staff to do that for two weeks. But again, things are evolving very quickly. And so just yesterday, we actually have a dedicated um, subcommittee that just works on PPE. Mm -hmm. And we call them the mass committee. Mm -hmm. um, but they literally meet every single day at one o'clock to say, okay, what's new? What's, you know, should we, how should we change? And so um, it looks like we are going to start giving now a, a new N95 mask to those high risk or employees working in high risk areas now for every single day. And then you and me, instead of wearing them two weeks, three weeks, we will get one every week we'll get a new one. That could become even more frequent too. So right. again, it all depends on the availability and the consistency of that supply chain, but it is definitely looking much, much better mm -hmm. than it did just a few weeks ago. And the fact that we're seeing kind of some cooling off, that we, if we are flattening the curve and hitting that, um, again, we only have 28 patients mm -hmm. that are in-house today um, that are COVID positive. So we definitely want to make certain that those employees are well protected. Right. And, and we do. Uh, Channel 30 did a story um, a few days ago, and we want to um, just remind the community that, you know, the well-being of our staff is our top priority and making sure that they're safe. So we are following the CDC guidelines yes. on masking. Um,